Um, always apply, and we, we kind of said this before, always apply extended ACLs closest to the source of the traffic. Uh, and again, standard ACLs, you should apply closest to the destination of the traffic. Uh, extended ACLs closest to the source of the traffic. So be cognizant of uh, using the correct source and destination port numbers as well. So, like for instance, um, you know, the, this, uh, this computer wants to um, access a web page. So it's going to send a packet. It wants to access foxnews.com for some reason. Uh, it sends out a packet across the internet, and it's got a destination, a port 80, which is the standard HTTP you know, web browsing uh, port number. But you'll notice it's got on the source address it's got you know its its IP address the 204.1.9.52, and then it's got uh, this random port number of 3382, and that's exactly what it is. It's a random port number. Whenever a um, you know a, an application on a, a PC or some other kind of computer is is trying to access something across the net, in most cases where it's it's not using a standard port number for something specific. It's going to use a, a random port number on its on its destin or on its source. The destination usually is going to be a well-known port number. The the source uh, port number though is usually going to be a randomly randomly pulled from a listing. Um, you know, up to 1,024 the known common port numbers. It's going to pull from something after that that's not a commonly like used one. So like if you had if you were pulling up multiple web pages, you know, say you've got like multiple web browsers or multiple tabs open. Like the fact that it has a different source port number is how the web page knows to you know pull up a certain web page on that tab and not a different tab on your Firefox browser. You know it's gonna three eighty you know thirty three eighty two might be applied to the first tab, thirty three eighty three might be applied to the next tab. So that's how it keeps track of where um, you know what should be processing what stuff when it comes back. So you know that that packet goes out to Fox News web server over here. They send a packet back. It's got a source address of 80, which is where the destination from this side was. The destination uh, address or destination port number was destination address is this IP, obviously. Destination port number is the same as the the source on this side. So make sure you're you're cognizant of that as well. You have to you have to be aware of you know which port number is going in which direction. Um, so if you were to the where we were at just before this slide. If you were to take it a step further, um, and you know, access dash list one fifty permit TCP host, you know, your IP address, any question mark, and then it gives you a whole list of uh, you know your your next option in line. We kind of keep going on from there. In this in this case, they chose uh, equal to, um, and in this case, you can put you know a specific port number and. And that's exactly what they did in this particular instance. So access dash list 150 permit TCP host one uh, 10.1.1.5 any is equal to 80. So what that's saying is, um, you know, for this ACL, it's got a permit statement uh, for the TCP protocol uh, sourcing from this host of 10.1.1.5 uh, with a destination of um, you know with the destination of any IP and uh, protocol of 80. So it's basically saying that this host can access any IP address for the HTTP protocol. That's, that's exactly what it says. Um, when, you start, when you start getting into ACLs and using the question mark, you really get an idea for the granularity that you can apply as far as setting up ACLs. So um, the CCNA tries to keep it a little bit simple. Um, especially when it comes to port numbers. These guys over here are probably the only, I mean, you should probably memorize all the port numbers that we talked about earlier in the book, but these are the ones that are primarily going to be used when it comes to um, setting up ACL. So port 21 is FTP, 23 is Telnet, 25 is uh, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, 53 is DNS, 80 is HTTP, 443 is HTTPS, and then UDP ports of uh, 53 for DNS and 69 for TFTP. So, Keep these in mind whenever you uh, get ready to take the CCNA because you may have to set up an ACL that specifies these particular port numbers. And then uh, some examples of uh, some extended access lists. Um, we're going to use the same, basically the same diagram as we were using before. Um, first of all, blocking a subnet. Um, in this example, the network 2 subnet 
is blocked from reaching the internet server 172.16.50.100 so using FTP specifically so um, you know, network 2 is over here we don't want it to be able to access this IP remember that um, for extended ACLs we want to apply traffic closest to the source of the traffic so we'll apply it over here on the uh, the, the Maggie router on the FA00 interface in the inbound direction there it is, IP access group 125N, applied to that interface. The actual creation of the ACL is going to be access dash list uh, number 125, deny TCP uh, from this subnet of 172.16.70.0.0.0.255 and uh, deny it from, uh, from accessing the host 172.16.50.100 on port 21. So that's the only port it blocks. Um, and you got to have a, a statement after there to allow everything else. Otherwise, again, it's going to have that implicit deny and block stuff. And then it's it's applied as we discussed before on the inbound direction of fast Ethernet 00. Um, so, next example restricting by protocol. In this example, we'll allow network 1 to use only HTTP and HTTPS to access the internet server, and no other restrictions are placed. Um, so, you know, network one right over here um, so access dash list 130 permit TCP host 172.16.6100 uh, host 172.16.50.100 equals uh, port 80 and then the same, the exact same line, but basically equaling port 443 for HTTP and HTTPS. Um, access dash list 130 deny IP host 172.16.100 uh, to host uh, 172.16.50.100. So it, it's going to allow, you know, allow this IP to reach this IP for port 80 and port 443. For every other protocol um, and every other port number, it's going to deny it from accessing that IP. And then uh, access dash list 130 permit IP any any. So that basically allows it to, it's only blocking it with respect to these IPs. Everything else is going to be allowed for every other IP. And then we've, we need to apply it to fast Ethernet 00 uh, with uh, IP access dash group 130 in. And then our, our last example on extended ACLs, um, restricting by network. In this example, the network should block all incoming traffic from the internet unless a host on your network previously requested the traffic. That's kind of a sneaky one. Um, this allows TCP established sessions to be the only traffic coming from the internet. So whenever, and you'll see it right here, this TCP any any established, the, uh, that's basically saying that your computer has already uh, requested a TCP session to start. So, you know, UDP, you just send the traffic, you don't care how it gets there or if it does. Um, it's just, you know, you're sending it, you're sending it, hopefully it gets there. Some of it may, some of it may not. With TCP, you actually have to establish a session because you're concerned with verifying that the packets do in fact, have in fact made it to their, their endpoint. You need a confirmation that they have. So, you know, for TCP, you send a, an ACK Synac and send you know packets to to uh, get this session established. This statement is basically only allowing the traffic to pass once that TCP session has been established. So access dash list one ten permit TCP any any IP to any other IP established, and then we apply that uh, inbound on uh, serial one slash zero. So that'd be on the the Marge router pointing to the internet. So anything inbound from the internet. Uh, unless it's got the TCP establishment from the host on this side, it's not going to allow it through.